I can hear you. Where'd you put my stuff? Brian. Is um my screen working back? I'm at the show and I don't have it. Okay, just so you know, you all, my husband said nicely, want me to put your stuff in the car for you? I said, yeah, there's three things. I put them all. All he's got to do is lift them in the car. He goes, okay, you got it. So I just assumed, because that's our routine, yeah, but right? Did he, he put it in the wrong car? He didn't put it in any car. Uh -huh. Anyway, welcome to an episode of Shenanigans. Yeah, we're you starting all... off on a good yeah, note. Yeah, I bet you all missed me. Probably not. We did miss you, Brad. Yeah, you guys don't have to lie. No, get... he's calling me back. I didn't get my uh, outline I'm going to take done. the call, people. You're on, spe Hello. you're on speaker on the show, so be careful what you say. Uh, well, then, then I owe an apology to all of your viewers and your cohorts <laughs> there that I overlooked my responsibility. <laughs> oh, God. See? Brian's... Thank you, honey bun. <laughs> Cameron is headed that way. Alright, awesome possum. Thank you. <laughs> Shop news. Um, we have some fabric that came in, the Samara collection from Better Where is Better it? Where is it? <gasps> so that came in last week. We should have a um the kit and stuff ready to go oh, fairly soon I for really that. I really like that. Um and then I want to show this up. We got this sample done. This came in, I think this just came in just before I left, but they And they I were came busy, back. Busy, busy, busy. And um that is definitely a Brent and Amanda and Amanda. Do you have this one yet? So that's pretty much it for shop news. We'll be getting some classes and stuff online. I'm hoping to really get classes started. It's probably not going to be till late August, September. You say that every every because I've been on vacation, but I have plans. You see, because when you're you know driving and out, out in the middle of nowhere, do you, you think... think he thought about us at all when he was out driving in the middle of nowhere? Um, but yes. Yeah, so we'll we'll be getting uh, classes updated here probably. It's Shortly, we'll be getting some stuff added to the calendar. And I talked to somebody yesterday. I don't know how many people are interested in this. Can you give me the book? But I found, um, hopefully we'll be talking to her and we can make this for real. But we might be able to. The pro book. The quilting. But I thought somebody. I'm the only one with a brain turned off. We, may, we <laughs> might be doing classes in costuming. I found what? somebody that does costumes, and she's very excited. I'm like, you want to teach class? She's like, sure. And she was like... Costuming? Yeah, she was like, cosplay costuming. I thought it would be kind of fun to um, to do like a class yeah, on that. So, today. yeah. So we're going to try and get some more interesting, a little more diverse stuff going on as far as classes go. I would like a paint and sip. I thought I actually thought of that when I was driving. I'm like, we should do paint and sips. Uh, <laughs> I want a paint and sip. <laughs> the other thing that I'm gonna I'm working on details because I kicked the idea around. So far, it's been well received. I haven't told Becky yet, so she'll get excited about it. Maybe I won't. But what <laughs> maybe I'm, I will. But we're, I'm working the details. I was probably not gonna be till October, but I'm gonna throw it out there now so you can all start thinking about it. We're gonna put together a quilter swap meet. So when you're cleaning out, save all your stuff up, and then we're gonna get like a get like a gymnasium or something for the day and you come hang out. And I've already you... started my pile. So while I'm on vacation, I come back and all these like Amazon orders are showing up. I'm like, I didn't do any shopping while I was in the middle of nowhere. Well, we told and you then, we were shopping. And that's fine. See, and this, this was supposed to be my pro tip, but you know, this is all about, we have such a huge investment in our wool mats and they get cucky. They get and cucky? You, they get stuff on them, and yep. then mine because I use it for boy that's almost new. Mine gets starch on it, mm -hmm. and so I saw this person selling these wool mat cleaners, <laughs> wool mat cleaners, which I bought, and then I went on Amazon and I went those look like the same thing as my wool mat cleaner, only they half the price. Because they didn't put quilter in the name. You put quilter in front of anything and they and double the price. They are exactly the same thing. These are for cleaning pet hair. But watch this. The, I seriously, I'm like, whoa. It will look like new when I'm done. I, you rake it. and it, It's like a... I turn it because I hate this stuff here. But it gets the threads off. Now... I noticed there was some discoloring on one of these. So if you get starch like I had, which is what I was going to demo, um, you kind of do one of these. And it just picks it right up? Yeah. So if it's extra dirty with stains from your iron, which is, I was hoping that's what you brought me. You already took care of it? I had to. I was playing. <laughs> but and look it, how clean it comes out. And could you save all the leftovers and spin your own wool and make yourself a sweater out of your wool mat? 
you you could. Okay, here's some with discoloration. This is when I would go a little bit more. Discoloration looks like it's red. That's like. That's not. What is that? It's paint. How do you know it's paint, Eddie? I'd have to get in there a little heavier because it's absorbed, but it is lightening up. I mean, it you just requires more elbow grease when you got stuff. But like then you're that. gonna like dig a hole in it. Well, you sort of do, yeah. yeah. Well, every time you do this, you're gonna get rid of some of your yeah. mat, but it cleans up. So we'll have these in here. They're at really some point. cool okay. for cleaning wool mats, and you know I love my wool mat, so. Okay. Thank you, Danny. So you rescued tip. me on that. That was my turbo tip. So that we are gonna do. We're starting a new segment. The workbench is now being gonna come Brent's basic so long. Oh. So over the course of, oh, a, of we're a, doing a sew along. Over the course of probably the next month or two, we'll do a quilt. So every every week I'll do a little portion or a little block as like a basic, <laughs> as a basic, a very this is gonna be a basic sew along. So I'm not gonna actually I sew love, anything. I love our live audience. We have a today. live audience. So Brent, so the workbench is now Brent's basic sew along is what I guess I'm trying to say. So today on Brent's Basic So Long, we're going to talk about a nine, nine patch. patch. Yeah. See, so you, just, you, you, know, you know why it's called Basic, because probably everybody here knows exactly what I'm going to cover today. I'm going to show you real quick how to make this nine patch. I'm not going to, I'm going to run today kind of like how they, job. Do, like they do a cooking show. I'm just going to show you what to do, and I'm not going to actually show it. You know, I'm it. picking it apart. I know one of the points isn't quite perfect. I knew you were going to say no, something. No, no, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. You even ironed. I know, well, yeah, that's we, what I'm checking. I know, we're going to go over all of do this. Do you want an iron now? No, we're In good. a wool mat? So, to make a quick, uh, the nine patch, it's really a quick, simple block. And that's going to finish out at 12 inches. Right now it's 12 and a half. Um, I'm double checking his math. Yes, it is. Um, and the way you make that is with strips. So, all I did is I cut a bunch of strips that are, because it's 12 inches, what's 12 divided by three? Four. Four. Add your seam allowance, it's four and a half. Because you see, there's three strips in this if you look. Three strips. So, depending on the size, is how thick you cut your strips. And you can cut your strips any size you want. I was going with a standard 12 inch block. That's what I went with four and a half. But all I did was I cut, um, to do this one, you, you can get away with just cutting three, three um, four and a half inch strips. To get a 12 and a half, you could do two and a half, three and a half, whatever. Strips. All of them the same size. You cut three the same width. So, there's a black one. You have your, your, your two alternating colors. That's all yes. you do. Take your strips. After you get your strips cut, Sew your strips together, and here's what they look like. And this is called a strip set. A strip set, yes. So you'll notice we have one strip set with black in the middle, and we have another strip set with our orange in the middle. Now, it's important to keep in mind that you will need twice as many strips with the orange in the middle that you need for the black in the middle, because if you look at your strip set, you have two of these and only one of those. So far so good? Yeah. Because after you make your strip set, whatever that whatever you cut these strips at, you take your strip set, turn it sideways, and cut these the same width that you cut these strips. After you pay attention to how you iron your And seams. we're going to talk about that in a second. Because the other trick to make your life really easy, and the reason I like strip sets is because I'm not a big fan of ironing, but to get your <laughs> to get your blocks to lock together, or, or prepping ironing is very important on a, like a nine patch, and you'll see this with a lot of things. So what I do is I you always press to the dark is kind of a generic. I'm not going to say always press to the dark, but choose one or the other and press to that in both cases. So in this case, if you look closely, you'll notice I have pressed the seams to the dark on here, and even on the strip set where the dark is on the outside, I also pressed to the dark. So you press to the same direction both times. What you're gonna do is when you layer these to sew them together, see how that's pressed one direction? And if I fold this up, that's pressed in the opposite direction. You can kind of see that? What that does is when you lay these on there, those seams will lock it into each other. So if you look carefully, you'll see how those two seams lock right into each other. We call that nesting your seam. And that is why my um, points are good enough that Becky's not giving me too much grief over them because I used the, the pressing took care of it. But you'll notice this one over here is well, a little I'm off. Not pointing that one but, um, but so if you press to the dark, when you cut your four and a half Don't inch strip, this. when you cut your strips, <laughs> when you cut these strips out of your strip set, as long as you pressed in the same direction both times, 
you'll be able to lock your seams in. So you can see where we, we sewed this strip set together, then we cut four and a half inches off to get this here. And we did our pressing before we cut it, so it was really easy. Then you just sew them okay. together to create your block. I was showing the pressing on the back. Okay, afterwards. the pressing, yes. She you, pressed it again. And then I pressed it again. When, and then when you press it the final time, I, I went to the dark, I think, but it's not a big, that's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. But you can see on the top here, I went towards the dark. Um, and as long as you do that every time, everything lines up. So that's Especially if he puts two more of these together and it's alternating, yeah. they will continue to nest. Yeah, they'll continue to nest. So this is how you get a nine patch. And um, like uh, Becky just said, you, if you didn't want to do a nine patch, you could continue to just sew um, this together. You can get like a, a check border type thing. But strip uh, st strip blocks are quick and easy, and I'm gonna we're gonna elaborate on that probably a little bit more next week. Oh, but um, but like I said, when you do do this, you can do all if you cut the same amount of strips out of your strip set, you'll have alternating blocks. You'll have one with the orange center and one with the black center. If you just want one way, then you've got to cut twice as many. Two, it's a two to one ratio of the strip sets if you're doing all the same block. So if you're going to uh, make that block, you're going to want to do two of these strip sets to one of these strip sets. So that's all I wanted to get today in Good. Brent's basic sew along is that's a quick, easy nine, basic patch. nine patch. And like I said, the 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 it can take you a this, long way. These nine patches. And I threw I threw pretty. this together from cutting to finish in about fifteen minutes for that one block, and I could have probably done a half a dozen in about in a in an hour. You can knock a bunch down. I like it. Do I got to keep going? Just can't, just can't I got a little yet. shop new. No, we can't. We can. So okay. we can. I got a little shop news. I talked about this book last week, and I said, "Hey, Eddie." I want to get this in, and by golly, he got it in yeah, already. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Eddie's on top of it. Yeah, this this book, yeah, the edge to edge. But notice it says pro. This is edge, okay, edge edge to edge pro. This is the updated version. So when you go shopping, this is the one you're looking for. And why do we want pro? We want pro because what it's going to allow you to do is download it comes with no files at all you will go onto dimes website and you will download her working design files they are not in machine format they are in the format that the dime tool shed software creates which is cs2 and she shows you how to download the Dime Tool software for free as well. The beauty of that is you can take your designs and you can modify them to be any size you want without any distortion to your stitches. Because you're working with the original file, and not the, the working file. file. Yeah, okay. And then you send it out and you say okay now save it as a pes or dxt or vip or whatever format you need any of your sewing machine formats you then output after you size it so it takes a lot of your guesswork out of what size do i need to make this quilt the other thing that she did is she added borders now my question on that so we are now doing semi-custom quilting now you can resize now. those correct mm -hmm. But keep in mind, unlike the blue tiles, mm -hmm. when you go from a, say you resize a six inch to an eight inch, mm -hmm. the whole pattern is scaling. Yes. The upside to the Kimberbell stuff is mm -hmm. that their six inch pattern and their eight inch pattern are all done at the same they're scale. They're at the same scale, so yes. they're, they're interchangeable. So if yes. you are going to resize, you've got to stick you, to whatever you, you resize. Do. It, whatever you have you to make to. the decision. That's a very good point. You have to make. The beauty is if I measure my quilt out and I want one border around it and I measure my edge to edge area, I can quickly do, and by the way, she's got math sheets to download. Jean is asking, can it be used with Brilliance? And unfortunately the answer is no. That was, I really wanted it to work there. But uh, the Dime Tool Shed software is free. It's okay. another version of Brilliance. You know how many yeah. companies... I did not want to have to download another piece of software. Now, will the Dime Toolshed export 
into a format that you can throw it into like in brilliance or different you can but i don't know what the point of that would be i'm just curious i don't know because again at that point it's a pes file it's not non-working oh that's file. what i'm saying but can you can, can you convert the working file into another format of a working file so if you had no, no oh they're so they're doing no. it to convince you they to buy definitely the dime stuff, tied oh, into dime definitely I got tied you. into dime I okay. but if you like her stuff i think this is the route she's going and um, she goes through, I think you're going to have to have a class on it though. Um, she goes through how to calculate your optimum size. There's still that kind of math involved. Yeah, well, that's why. That's but what, that, it's still pretty cool. Like, I do that with Kimberbell too. Yeah, but though, I still like the Kimberbell because a little bit. you can always just, uh, I'm two inches short, find the two inch yeah, version. That, that's, why, that's why I think the blue tiles are genius. They personally. are genius. They are genius. But I like the fact and that I you lose, can... I use those files all the time, but I think she won up her game. Yeah. Definitely oh, yeah. won up her game. And That's a good direction to go. I think that maybe makes it more useful. I think she needs to go back and release some of her other files in the format, too, and people yeah. will be very happy with her. All um, right. I brought a sample, but it's not here, so would you... So you didn't bring a sample. <laughs> I made a sample. Hi, Cam! Oh, Hello. good! Just in time! My stuff is here! Say hi! Say hi, Cam! Hello, this everybody! Is, this is my Hello. one of my baby boys from Washington. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> Look at Doing a special run because my father could not pack this in the car, so I had to come take care of this. You, you rescued Daddy. <laughs> yeah. How many times do you hoop something and you find out that you hooped it too low or too left or too right. Now, some of you have grids for your hoops. They and stop. some of you do not. This grids. one did not come with a grid, and I didn't want to buy a grid. Grids came standard up with up with the Dream Machines all had grids, oh, but they down. stopped... They stopped shipping grids with the Luminaire because with the, with the imaging and everything built in, nobody was using them. Right, and I don't like the grids. However, what I like... See these markings on this hoop? Yeah. That's a Sharpie. And that's permanent. That is permanent. I mark my hoop. And this mark tells me this is going to be the lowest I can go on a design. This is the highest I can... No, pretend, pretend this is in here. Although you can use this again and again. I'll show you how I created this. But these tell me, look, this is a guide, Becky. Okay? When, when this isn't in here, I can eyeball... How far away my design needs to be over here. How far I need to be up here. For, I know, just by looking at this hoop, this is dead space. Mm -hmm. So I mark every hoop with these little marks. And, and for all you that are going to ask, why do they have the dead space? It's so you don't break your machine. If you get, if you um, jam your hoop or something, you've got a little bit of leeway in there so that yeah. you're not hitting the hoop with your needle. Because it gets expensive if you now ride this, over a hoop with the needle. This I actually drew all around with a Sharpie, too, because I can reuse this. This is done on a cutaway, and I can cut this out, and I can use it again when I'm doing any of my quilting or I want to line something up. And but you, I want to show you how I and so when figured you hoop, this out. So when you hoop this up, if you're going to use it again, you just line up the, the corner points? Yeah, I would I would cut this out and put on my fabric first. Oh, okay. That makes sense. You know sense. what I mean? Yep. I, with my famous glue or my blue I got you. Yeah, blue yeah. Or okay. I would stick it on my fabric. So then, then you would you would it. cut this template out to just to yeah. the inside mark here. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Which is what I was gonna do next. But I want to show you how I got these points. Okay. So the beauty of this is once I take this out, I am left with a, a frame with marks that my brain easily can use to eyeball where my space is. What I do is I look at my frames and I try to fig get the biggest design possible just to save me marking my frame. Okay, while we're oh, in okay, there. Okay, I got you. Okay. While we're in there, can you go into settings? I want to I want to show you something that a lot of people forget about. Go ahead and change our frame size to um, the 10 and 16. Yep whatever the biggest one on the luminaire and i believe the solaris this this is just going to give us a square on our screen it doesn't really do anything but give us a visual yeah and then so that's but i want you to turn on the grid too the frame size in, and then grid we can show how which put one, a one inch grid on it for me okay. some people don't even know the grid's there yeah but you've got a crosshair grid 
Uh, so you can just, when you see the screen, you're going to see, I set it up as a one inch grid for my butterfly. And if you're, and if you're working off of a Dreamweaver or any machine that does not actually have um, imaging in it, mm -hmm. the, I believe it's the one inch, one of these, either the one inch grid or the three eighths grid actually corresponds with the grid inserts that come with the machine. I think it's a three eighths. Yeah, I think it's a three eighths too. So that, so that three eighths grid, if you turn the three eighths grid on. You, you will start to see it on your screen. Yes. Which, which is very helpful when you're trying to make sure something thing is yeah, so straight and all the way up or all the way to the left which is what we're going to do so these these squares would correspond with your grid in the in the hoop if you didn't have mm -hmm. um you don't see people using them a lot on the luminaires or the dream machines but you would on a on a dream creator or a dream weaver or even the um the 1700e yeah i find it very useful at times when i know i want to just be two inches away from something yes because i've hooped it if you use you yeah know. Anyway, okay, so say set. Okay. Because we like that. Okay, so this is this is a good size butterfly, as you can see. It's 12 and something by 10 it's, and something. Yeah, 12, right? and, 12 and a third by 10 okay. and a third. Now, what I want to do, it naturally comes up in the center of the hoop. And keep in mind when you're doing this, make sure that you don't move the um, arm. Uh, too much. If you do, you need to reset. You need to turn it off and turn it back on because if that arm moves, this whole calibration yep. makes no sense. Okay, so let's go into embroidery mode. Okay, we're in embroidery, so we're going to hit Choose embroidery. Choose embroidery, yeah. We yeah. well, can't really see. I want you to show the icons at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we've talked about the scissors and the tension one already. Um, that's where we adjust tension or turn on and off yeah. our jump stitches. We've talked about the needle plus or minus one. That is where we advance or, or go backwards in stitches. I want you to choose the next one. Now, see how it's blue already in the middle screen there? Yep. That's telling me my needle's in the middle. So right now, if I just had a blank piece of stabilizer and I dropped my needle, um, it's dropping my needle in the middle of what is the okay. hoop that I have on. Yeah, there we go. See? Now, what I did is I took a little Sharpie and I made a dot where it dropped its needle. Now, what we just did is we, we, we know that patent comes up in the middle of the hoop automatically. We, drop, we dropped it down. Now, what I want to do is I want to move my design all the way to the top of the hoop. So, we're going to return... Well, you actually difference you, in edit. You could do it under layout as well. Well, we'll do it next time under layout okay. then. The difference between layout and edit when it comes to moving. Move it all the way to the top of the screen. You hear that click click? Now I know I'm at the last stitching point of my hoop. The uppermost. The uppermost. Yes. So if I say okay. And I just want to cover real quick. If we moved it in edit. And because it's a single design, it only moved the one design. If right. you had multiple designs in there, it would only move the design you have highlighted. Unless they're grouped. Unless they're grouped. But then you can also just go into embroidery and layout. We'll move them all at once. Okay, now choose our needle position again. Yep. Yeah. And choose the upper middle corner. That's how I, and I drop my needle again. And then we again. drop our needle. Yep. Yeah. We're going to do a couple more. Now, you have to move your embroidery design first. Yes. If I just advance to the top needle, keep in mind, it's advancing to the top of my embroidery design. The reason this worked is because I said, Brent, move the design all the move. way up to the top of the hoop. Likewise, if you say, okay, we can move it all the way to the bottom of the hoop. We can move it all the way to the left. We can move it all the way to the right. Tedious at first, but once I have this done and I draw on my 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 hoop, I have it forever mm -hmm. and I'm done. And if I want to keep this, I can, but I probably wouldn't, to be honest with you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, okay, and then we're just gonna we'll do the move this time through the layout, very similar, and then we're all the way up, so we're gonna move it all the way to the right. All the way to the right, left. That's the left. left. Yeah. Oh. Did you move it that way? Yeah. That's the left. Okay. My left. <laughs> My left. Well, it's, it's Eddie's right. We don't care about Eddie's right. You moved it this way. Yes. It's the left. So then we're going to go oh back here. Oh, my God. Here. We were golfing with, with somebody, and uh, her her husband was telling her which way to 
the putt was going to roll. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, Courtney, I'm throwing you under the bus. And and he goes, yeah, I see it breaking to the left. And she stood up there and she goes, that one? I, I can't make this up. Yeah. That left? Those are the real words. Yeah. That left? He goes, no, that left. <laughs> So, I'm like, oh, oh so we're this woman's grown ass adult and she's got two lefts. Yeah, this is how, this is how my mom does it. So we're like driving my, and my mom will give my dad directions. She's like, you need to take the next left. And my dad will be, are you sure? And now my mom is really sly about this, but if you pay attention, you'll see her do it all the time. She'll go like this and like look down at her hand. Because, <laughs> because your left hand makes an L and that's how she always checks herself. And it's, it's really funny because if she tries to do it on the slide... But that's funny. I got permanent tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she, because she, that's an L if you're looking at it. And so she always like try to slyly... Like, if she's giving yeah. you directions, she'll like... Oh, that's funny. And you can tell... Oh. And once you're aware of it, it's really funny, especially yeah. in the car when she's All like right. giving I'm directions. I'm going to watch next time she visits. I'm going to yeah, watch. Okay, so this is how I came up with the four corners. And you just did that for all the, all the different yeah. points. Yeah. Now, take, if you don't mind, take... Um, can I just show another... another oh, something sure. important Something important. Um, sure. When you start moving stuff around, um, this button here puts you back at the center every time. The reason that's important is because, say, you went up over here... Okay, and you want to get this middle point, the middle point here. Mm -hmm. Well, if you come over here and then start to come down, you don't know where that middle is. Push the center point again. And so you go to the center point, and then like you move us. it over. And that's why I like the grid. Yeah. See, I can see right on the. Yeah, grid. you can see that's the, yeah. why I like having the grid on. Yeah, and you um, can also, if you always, if you like just having that m reference, you can also do something like that, which gives you just the. Which is our crosshair. Yeah, crosshair. Speaking of luminaire. Yes. I heard it's official. What? There's an upgrade coming. It, and one of the things that's rumored to be there... What? Is when our bobbin is empty, the hoop will move completely out of our way so we can change our bobbin without taking the hoop off the machine! Oh, nice. Ah! Is it going to be, do you know if it's going to be an upgrade or an update? No, it's going to be an upgrade. It's, it's an upgrade, yep. so there'll be money involved. And Speaking I heard there's that. a new hoop. Coming out with, as well. Probably. Can't imagine when I need another hoop. Speaking of that, now that you've just totally, um, there, brother is running a special through July, through the end of July, um, on luminaires. So if you're thinking about getting one, let me know. They're going to be on. A, they're, they're, um, right now they're on sale. They're pretty decent price. Um, my suspicion is they're going to go up in price with the announcement of the new one. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that more than likely. It's, it's a gonna, new upgrade. It's gonna it's be not a whole cheaper. New machine. It's gonna be cheaper to buy the one that's on sale now and then buy the upgrade package to bring it to a three, if I had to guess. Yeah. Now I don't think they're coming out as Luminaire three. Three is just gonna, be, gonna an be an upgrade. Yeah, an upgrade to the one and two. Yeah. And so what I'm gonna say is um well hmm, I'm curious how they're gonna do that. I don't well maybe because I'm if, wrong on yeah, that. If it's they, all rumor mill stuff. Yeah, if they don't come out with a three, then you're gonna have to buy the upgrade anyway. But if yeah, they do, that's true. If they do come out with a three, I can tell I'm you that the price is gonna go up. I'm excited about So either way, buy a luminaire, they're on sale. Out of the way, because that's always irritated me because Janome yeah. does a good job yeah. on that. Anyway, so there's a tip for you on marking your hoops so yes. you don't get in magnetic hoops as well. You can do the same yeah. thing. And, now, and once it's marked, it's Done. Have you done it with magnetic hoops? Because I'm yeah. curious to know about it. Do you have the same amount of... Are they, Do the magnetic hoops cut it a little bit closer to the edge of the... No. They're about the same? Mm, yeah. Okay. And, um, and with the magnet, I obviously just do the top one. Yeah. And again, it's an eyeball because you're making sure that magnetic hoop is even top and bottom. Yeah. So they're not... It's not gospel markings. Oh, also, oh, the um, cup okay. of cheer. Everybody that was excited about I, this, I guess we're going into, um, so that was all you had for this? So if I get into I'm all right. I'm done. Okay. I just want people I, to know I'm just about thought, making those Watching you pull cool. stuff out remind me of other shop news. Okay, cup well, of cheer from yeah, Kimberbell this... is in. <gasps> Why aren't we looking at it? Because, because I'm not, we have it in. If you want to come buy it, you can. But... I'm waiting for the fabric kits to come in oh, because I do. So it's not all in. We talked about that. The patterns we and the together. embellishments are here, but the fabric kit I'm hoping should be here next week or the week after. Yeah, fabric has we kind of want them to all go together. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what I'm letting people know. Right. It's on its way in. Yeah, and they released new background quilting patterns yeah. for that. If you do want to, what, we're, what we are going to do though is if you are interested in doing the cup of cheer and you want the entire kit, we will sell you the entire kit. 
And then when the fabric comes in, we'll give you a holler. But you, you can just pay for it all at once, come get the patterns, and you can go home and play with it and all that. And then when the fabric I comes in... I think I might have mentioned a discount if they bought all three. The, but he's back now. No, mm. but what I'm, no, what I'm going to say is if the all three, there will be a package price that would reflect some sort of at least a 10% discount. <gasps> because you, At least, he said. Well, yeah, usually... Now we'll, you're in trouble. Well, no, because whenever we package them up like that, I try I to... I love that they get packaged I try to make sure really that you're do. getting a little bit of a deal so that you're not yeah. one of those people that... To save you the trouble of, you know, you know those people that are going to be like, I'm going to buy the, I'm guilty of this when I'm buying parts for a project. Yeah. I buy a little bit here, buy a little bit, because it's cheaper than buying the yeah. actual kit. So I try to price our kits to save you that yeah. aggravation. Abs You're yeah. just coming like, oh, wow, that's a good price for uh, that kit. Right. And that's how we like to pick, yeah. do them. Yeah. She always gives you a bag. Oh, did I tell you I went to like a, this, this like fancy barber shop and got like a whole beard trim and the whole thing. It was like an hour and a half. It was like a weird man spa day thing. It was fantastic. Anyway. You don't look any different. I know because I. Because it grew out cause, already. Because it was like a, two weeks ago. Mm, yeah. But I'm thinking I got to find one around here. Your head looks a little woolly today. Yeah, well, I, I drove my <laughs> I drove my scooter in, and so I have helmet head. Hi, Sue. Okay. Anyway, thanks for joining us for another episode of Shenanigans with Brent and Becky. Join us again next week. Miss you. And remember, you. miss you. So on and be excellent to each other. Toodles. Uh,